The state legislature has recently awarded the Minnesota Humanities Center $12 million to fund grants, the highest amount the organization has ever received. And there were many different kinds of grants available, but one that sticks out is a new emergency response grant. So the center will be awarding $100,000 to cultural organizations in the immediate aftermath, violence, or a crisis. So to talk more about this is the CEO of the Minnesota Humanities Center, Kevin Lindsay. Always great to hear from you, Kevin. Oh, thank you very much for having me here today. So let's start with this. Can you explain what an emergency response grant is and then also who would qualify for something like that? Sure. So any individual organization that's responding to a crisis here within the state of Minnesota to bring healing, uh, help people process through the grieving process, to find ways for people to connect through and respond to the emergency. Mm -hmm. And certainly think of many instances where this would be very important, but what was the impetus? Like what inspired this type of funding? Yeah, I appreciate that question. So uh, during a legislative se session, Representative Her and then Representative Hussein, uh, both responding to the crisis at Harding High School, which unfortunately a, a student was stabbed and ultimately right. lost his life, mm -hmm. seeing how many cultural organizations responded immediately to the needs of the school to bring healing to the students, to bring healing to uh, the administrators and teachers, um, I had a chance to actually be in the school within the first 48 hours after the uh, terrible incident, and you could tell how emotionally draining it mm -hmm. was for everyone in the building. And a wide array of organizations came in to provide their assistance, uh, many doing it without any idea of being compensated at all. And I think this really motivated Representative Hussein and Representative Her to lean in and say, we should recognize the great contributions such organizations make, and could the Minnesota Humanities Center be a vehicle to provide some level of funding? Yeah, I mean, not only recognize it financially, but also give them a way to pre perhaps create a better response for these things, too, to put thought into it sort of beforehand to have the most impact possible. No, I think that's exactly right. So at the federal level, uh, Chair Lowe, the National Endowment for the Humanities, that created a program called United We Stand. And she uh, was inspired uh, by the tragedy here of George Floyd, the, the massacre in Buffalo, and seeing again how uh, humanities organizations leaned in at that point in time. So again, we shared uh, if the legislature was thinking about a model to take a look at what was happening mm -hmm. at the federal mm -hmm. level, and I think uh, that inspired them, and as you say, yeah. How do we create an ongoing right. infrastructure? How do we go an ongoing kind of way of thinking to be able to process through grief in this way? You mentioned cultural organizations before. Can you talk a little more about the role that cultural organizations would play when an emergency crisis takes place? Because you mentioned that they weren't expecting necessarily to be compensated for this, but this is actually a welcome sign too. Well, I, I think, <laughs> There are so many organizations that we are very fortunate to be uh, a grant provider to that we see them often lean in and start the process of thinking about um, how to respond to the unique grie uh, grieving process of families, mm -hmm. how to think about where there has been uh, incidents of racial violence or intolerance, how to step into that breach mm -hmm. and to prepare the community to start the healing process. I don't want to suggest that you rush through this because I don't think that that's also helpful. There is a need to sort of um, go through the various stages of grief and anger within that spot, but to do so in a way that we come out of it uh, in a healing way, in a way that benefits all for the long term. Uh, these organizations have been thinking about it. They rely sometimes um, on the various religious texts, sort of the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, other texts, but sometimes they rely on cultural stories within respective communities. Mm. Right. And that is really important for those local communities to be able to see somebody in their community respond in that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's sort of to follow up on AJ's question there and to expand upon what you're talking about, the importance of having these culturally specific organizations. And when you first came in, you just mentioned there were a lot of different types of organizations that were coming in. Why is it so important to have these different culturally specific organizations represented? Well, the reality is, is that uh, Minnesota, like the rest of the country, is much more racially, ethnically diverse. Mm -hmm. And when we think of um, how we might specifically respond, uh, say, 15, 20 years ago, right. 
we now know uh, that there are a broader array of kaleidoscope mm -hmm. of communities and culture that has to be taken into consideration. And we're, I think we're better at it yeah. than what we were before. I think sometimes we were naive and we would rush in and say, because uh, we think somebody has uh, a hue of color like myself, um, that they might not be an African immigrant or they might mm. <laughs> not be mm. um, someone from uh, south of the equator, right? Mm. But that's not true, right. right? And so the communities understanding what has happened, um, they begin to start asking questions very soon after to try and make sense. We all do as human beings mm -hmm. try to make sense of something very horrific that has happened to us. But folks that have put in the emotional deposits to have put right. in the time within community, can be able to hear that, can step back and maybe bring other resources to bear, bring ways of thinking for healing mm. that mm. someone who has no connection to the community right. might not be able to do. So $12 million, are, mm -hmm. are there specific groups that you can think of that should be coming to you, coming to uh, the Humanity Center and asking for more details as far as how they can get their hands on some of that? I appreciate that question. So the last legislative session, $5 million was provided for cultural heritage grants. Okay. So what the legislature heard is that we provided about 75% to very small organizations. And by very small organizations, I'm talking organizations had less than 300,000 of annual revenue. Okay. Uh, within that, they heard that there were some of those organizations, but for the lack of, say, building capacity, mm -hmm. they would have approached and applied for more than what we offered. So okay. the, the cap was $75,000 last year. Mm -hmm. I share that with you because the legislature heard that there were more applications than the money that we could receive. Mm -hmm. So they moved it up from $5 million to $8 million for cultural heritage grants. And then they also provided $750,000 for building capacity grants. So this is an opportunity for those organizations that are doing work with the various immigrant diaspora communities here, mm -hmm. Latin, uh, Latinx community, Asian Pacific, African American community, LGBTQI community for the very first time within Legacy, to provide uh, cultural programming, uh, amplifying the respective uh, interests of those respective communities. But they can also apply for grants to uh, help with grant writing and reporting, fundraising, building capacity, mm -hmm. not to host a fundraiser, mm -hmm. but to think long term about it and also nonprofit management for the very first right. time. Hmm. So again, this is t building a long-term infrastructure sure. within the entirety of the state. What's and the timeline we're talking about here? So we have a um, informational session uh, next Tuesday, okay. October 17th, uh, 1.30 to 3. You can go to our website, www.mnhum.org, mm -hmm. find information about that. Uh, the deadline for getting your application is October 30th. Okay. We have tried to make the uh, proposal as easy as possible for people to be able to apply. Mm -hmm. And then we have two individuals, Laura Adams and Tristy Auger, available to answer questions. Uh, and you can find the phone number uh, on our website, but it's 651-772-4244 for Laura Adams. Okay. Great stuff. Always a great conversation. Yeah, Whenever you come, yeah. there's always, we always like run out of time. We there's plan on three minutes, it ends up being eight, and eight it's always minutes great. Long, so <laughs> thank you again. We appreciate your time and your insight. Yes. Oh, uh, I really appreciate you making time available and helping us uh, be a good vessel for yes. the state of Minnesota. I like that word, Such, such important mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you.